I walked in the front door, made a bowl of ice cream and relaxed for a while. And I have to say, sometimes to myself was just what I needed. Once I had finished my ice cream, I walked around the side of the house, rubbed some dirt on my face and clothes, then came running out of the woods. I probably shouldn't have added that last part because Rowley totally gave up on that tear after that. Anyway, that break was just what the doctor ordered and the rest of the night was argument free. This morning, my family headed to church and Raleigh came with us. I don't think Raleigh's family really goes to church that much, so he's not used to all the rules about what you're supposed to do and when. So I always have to tell him when you need to kneel and stand and all that. Towards the end, we all did the peace be with you part where you're supposed to shake hands. I said peace be with you to Rolly, but he started giggling. I think he must have thought I said peace be with you like the vegetables. I don't think Rolly totally understood that you're just supposed to shake hands with people either because when the woman in the pew behind said us peace, be with you really give her a big wet kiss on the cheek. After church we drove really off at his house and I was glad he was gone and that I could go back to playing my game. And something tells me mom felt the same. December, Tuesday. Today I was playing net critters in my room and mom walked in. She watched me for a while then asked what I was doing in the game. I explained that I was watching my chihuahua watch TV because if you're virtual but watches at least two hours of comical a day, it makes him happy and you get 20 bonus points. Then I asked my mom if she wouldn't mind spotting me 10 bucks because my the net creatures store just starting carrying trampoline shoes and I was pretty Gregory's little friend would really like to have them. But I guess I picked the wrong time to ask mom for a loan because it seemed like she was was in a bad mood. She said I don't have any appreciation for the value of money and that if I want to pay for my net critter's habit, it was gonna come out of my own pocket. I told mom I didn't have any money of my own and that's why I keep hitting up her and dad. But she said there were plenty of things I could do to earn some. She said it's supposed to snow tonight and I could go out and show our neighbor's driveways tomorrow. I really don't feel comfortable knocking on doors and asking our neighbors for money. My school has three fundraisers a year and I have to go from out house to house begging people I hardly know to buy something for me. And half of the time I don't really even remember what I'm selling. I wish the school wouldn't give us something useful to sell. I like candy bars or cookies. The girls quite are lucky because at least they get to sell stuff people actually want. The way system works with these fundraisers is that our students do all the work and school gives us these chunky prizes reward. One time I sold twenty dollars worth of gourmet coffee beans and all I got was a cheap yo-yo that broke before I even got off school property but really really got stiffed he sold 150 worth of beans and got a Chinese finger trap as his price I it actually worked like it was supposed to but really couldn't get his finger out and his mom had to cut it off when he got home 
Last year, the school tried something different. They all had a sell raffle, raffle tickets, and whoever won the raffle would get a spring yard cleanup from the seventh grade class. Mrs. Spangler, who lives down the street from me, won the raffle, and on the first day of spring, the whole seventh class showed up at her house but there were only two wrecks of for all those kids for most most of the class just ended up sitting around with nothing to do and by the time the spring clean up was done mrs bangler yard was worse off than when it started the new thing the school is doing is these walkathon the idea is that well walk around the track at school a certain number of times like 100 or 200 laps and get our neighbors to sponsor us for each lap be completed. I can understand asking people to pay for seeds or coffee beans or whatever but I don't know what kind of person gets pleasure out of having some kid walk around the football field a couple of hundred times. The reason the school put us on walkathon in September was so that they could pay for a billboard near the park town. I couldn't figure out why the school didn't just skip the walkathon and have the kids clean up the town park instead. But I guess if the seventh grade was involved, they might have completely trashed it. I've done the maths and I figure out that each grown up on my street gives me an average of $23 a year for school fundraisers. So I should just invite all my neighbors to my house once a year and tell them to bring me the 23 bucks in cash but because it sure would save everyone a lot of pain and anguish. Wednesday. It snowed last night just like mom said it would and while all the other kids in the neighborhood were enjoying their day off from school, I was pounding the female looking for work. I thought about those doors I should knock on first but it wasn't easy. Mrs. Didier lives right across the street but she's a little too affectionate and I usually do my best to avoid her. Then there's Mr. Alexander who moved into the Snella's house. He must not have worn braces as a kid because his teeth aren't very straight. Unfortunately, this first time Dad met Mr. Alexander was on Halloween and Dad must have thought his teeth weren't real. So I decided to skip Mr. Alexander's house too. There are people who live on my street that I haven't spoke to in years. When I was about four, mom and dad had a cocktail party for some of the couples in the neighborhood and I went downstairs during the party to use the bathroom. But the, I guess back then, I didn't know how to lock doors. So Mr. Harkin walked right in on me. When I was done, I found mom and told on Mr. Harkin and I sure he felt like a jerk. So I'm not about to knock on the door of some high girl I read her out when I was in preschool and asked him for money either. Today, I realized there is just too much history between me and the people in my neighborhood, so I decided to go one street over to Francis Lane and start afresh. I walked up to the house on the corner and knocked on the door, but I recognized the lady who answered. She was Mrs. Melchior, one of the grandma's friends from Bingo. I told Mr. Melchior I was trying to earn a little money showing people's drivers at that I'd be happy to do there for five bucks. But she told me she never gets visitors and invited me inside to chat. I didn't want to be rude. So the next thing I knew, I was sitting in my 
This is Melchior's living room surrounded by the lawn ornaments she had taken inside for the winters. I feel a little uncomfortable, but I figured if I was gonna ask someone for money, the least I could do was trying to be polite. But all I could think about the whole time I sat there was how much money I could have been making if I just knocked on someone else's door instead. I mustn't been in there for an hour before I was finally able to steer the conversation back to the subject of me showing her driveway. But Mrs. Melker said her son was coming by in his pickup truck any minute, but he plows her driveways for free. So that's an hour of my life I never get back. I headed back out on the Prentice Street and started knocking on doors. I guess most people were at work, so it took me an hour to find someone who was actually home. I finally got lucky with the guy who looked like he had just woken up, came to the door. I told him I'd show his driver for five bucks, and he said it was a deal. I got to work, and I was making pretty good progress. Dress, but it started snowing in gale while I was showing. By the time I finished, it had some snowed so much that you could barely tell I'd done my work. So I rang the doorbell and asked the guy if he wanted me to show his driver again for another five bucks, but he wouldn't let go for it. And to make things works the guy said he wasn't gonna pay me the first five bucks until his driver was clean like i promised see this is why it's a good idea to have a contract before you start working for someone i out there and started showing but so much snow was falling that i was getting the wear then I had an idea. Grandma's house was only a few streets away, and I remembered that she keeps her lawn mower in the garage. So I walked over to her place and pushed the mower back to the driveway I was working on. I thought the snow moving idea was genius, and I couldn't believe no one had ever thought of it before. Unfortunately, it didn't go as smoothly as hoped it would. I thought the snow would shoot out of the slide, but the blade cut right through it and the snow stayed where it was. Eventually, the mover started making funny sounds and then all of a sudden it stopped. So I guess those things aren't really built for cool weather. I pushed the mover to grandma's and Put it back in her garage. Hopefully, it will thaw out before the summer rolls around. It, I still had this guy driver to deal with, but now the snow was really coming down, and there was no way I was gonna spend the rest of my day working for five bucks. I needed a quick solution. I could move on. I could see that. His garden hose was attached to the house, so I turned it on, put the nozzle to shower setting, and sprayed down to the snow in the driveways. It was great. The water melted the snow on contact, and I was crushed. Then I saw a sprinkler leaning up against the house, and I got an even better idea. Once I was finished, I turned off the sprinkler and knocked on the guy's door. He paid me five bucks when he saw his driveway was cleaned. I was pretty excited about the way things worked out, and I figured if I found some more people with sprinklers, I could have a multiple jobs going at once. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anyone else who was at home. But my idea probably wouldn't have worked out anyway because by the time I'd walked back down 
Princess Lane. In the driveway, I did with the sprinkler was frozen over. When Dad got home, he had to go out and buy five big bags of rock salt to mend the guy's driveway. So now, instead of having money in my pocket for all my hard work, I am 20 bucks in the hole. Thursday, Dad wasn't too happy that I had turned somebody driveway into an ice skating ring yesterday and he said he was disappointed in me for using poor judgment. That's the exact same phrase he used a few weeks ago when I scratched up his car. It all started when I won student of the week at school. When you win student of the week, they give you a bumper sticker that you can put on your family's car. The bumper sticker is pretty corny, but it was still cool to win it. I'm not sure what I'd won, but I think they just give it to everyone eventually. Fragly won student of the week this past Friday, and I'm guessing it was for nothing betting anyone for five days straight. Mom wanted to put my sticker on her car, but her bumper was so unclouded that I knew it would just get lost on there. So I'd asked Dad if I could put it on his car. But Dad had recently bought a new car and I thought my student of the week sticker would look really sharp on his bumper. But Dad said he didn't want to junk up his new car. At first, I was disappointed, but I guess I could kind of understand where he was coming from. My family doesn't have anything that's really nice. And when Dad came home from the dealership with the party car, I was pretty surprised. Mom wasn't happy that Dad picked out a car without talking taking it through with her though. She said the car looked flashy and that since it had only two doors it wasn't practical for a family of five but dad said it was the car he wanted and he kept it. After I talked to dad I didn't want to what to do with my sticker. So I just ended up giving it to Manny and telling him he could put it on his wagon or something. But Manny turned right around and put it smack in the middle of Dad's car side door. I, I freaked out because I knew Dad was gonna think I was the one who put it there. I tried to peel it off. They must have used super glue on the back of those things. So I got some soap and water and tried to scrub it off. But there was 20 minutes of scrubbing. I barely made a dent. I started looking for things cleaning up the press in the cabinet under the kitchen sink and I found some steel wool pads that looked like they might do the trick. Those things work pretty good on the boots and pants, so I figured they were worth a try on that car since it was a metal too. Sure enough, the steel wool made the bumper sticker come off the car so easy as pie. In fact, it was so easy that I kind of got carried away. I used to steal wool pads to scape off the box and bird poop too. I figured Dad would be pretty happy if I was cleaning his car for free. But when I ridden the car off with the hose, I got a huge surprise. The steel wool didn't just grab the bumper sticker and box off the car. It scraped the paint off too. I panicked and started filling in the bare spot with the permanent worker, but the area where the bumper sticker had been was too big, 
So I wrote a note in the mom's handwriting and taped it over that spot. I thought the note might buy me a few days, but dad uncovered this big error in no time flat. Dad was really mad at me, but mom came to my defense. She said everyone makes mistakes and that the important thing is that I learned my lesson and move on. I own more for that when she claimed dad down and I didn't even get grounded. Dad took the car to the dealer and said how much would it be to get the paint dust up. The dealer told him it was gonna cost a lot of money because there was custom paint job. Dad told his mom told Dad this was a sign that it was a mistake to get a fancy car in the first place and that he should just trade it in for using minivan instead. So that's what he did. The funny thing is that the minivan already had a student of fix sticker on the bumper from the peers owners but dad didn't seem to appreciate the humor in that sunday our family usually goes to church at 9 a.m but we went to the flock service at 11 a.m and the flock service has a different kind of music from the regular one and there's a band that plays guitar and stuff like that last week mom convinced Roderick to join the flock group because she got a flyer saying they were looking for a precautionist. I think Roderick imagined he was gonna get to play his drums in here, so he signed up. But it turned out the flock group was looking for someone to play hand precaution instruments like the tambourine and castanets. Roderick tried his best to look cool up there in the front of the church today but it's really hard to pull that off when you've got a pair of miracles in your hands i can totally relate to get duped into doing something without knowing all the details last year mom told me i should join the church preteen club but then i found out they were really lax about who qualify as a preteen. Every year, our church does this thing called the tree giving tree, where people in need put their requests in envelope and hang them on the tree. Then a family picks a random envelope, and whatever it says inside is what they're supposed to buy. As far as I know, there aren't any rules about who is allowed to put a request on the giving tree, so I decided to try my luck and fill out a form of my own. But I something told me mom and dad wouldn't approve, so I made sure it couldn't be traced back to me. Monday. This year at school, they taped off a bunch of tables in the cafeteria so kids with nut allergies could eat in a separate section. I think that's a great the school did that, but it means there's a lot less room for the rest of us to sit. I'm not sure anyone at my school is actually allergic to nuts though because for the first two months of this year, the tables in taped off area were completely empty but i guess ricardo friedman liked the idea of all the elbow because today he popped himself down in the middle of the nut free zone and ate two peanut butter and jelly sandwich he had brought from home today we had a general assembly and Everyone was all excited because they told us we were gonna get to watch a movie but it was just one of those educational films about eating healthy. I know I need to eat healthier 
but if you take fast food out of my diet i'm in big trouble because i'm probably something like 95 percent chicken nuggets i the school has been cracking down on junk food in the cafeteria last week they replaced the soda machine with the what water machine but it if they're gonna charge a dollar for a bottle of water they should probably think of a better place to put it the school also get rid of bunch of menu items like hot dogs and pizza and replace them with healthier stuff they even replace french fries with a new item called extreme spore sticks but it took everyone about five seconds to figure out that extreme spore sticks were just like carrots i usually bring a packed blunt to school but the one thing i could always buy from the cafeteria was a chocolate chip cookie last week though the chocolate chip cookies were replaced by oatmeal raisin cookies i still buy them and but i eat around the raisins which make a lot of work i can't tell you how many times i've bitten into an oatmeal raisin cookie thinking of what if chocolate chip cookie i have a theory that old meat raisin cookies were invented as a practical junk a long time ago and that they were never actually meant to be eaten most of the kids at school aren't too bothered by all the new menus but the thing that really set people off was when they took away the energy drinks the reason the school stopped selling raw tea shot was because teachers were complaining that the red tea was making kids hyperactive and if you walk into my classroom after lunch you'd see what they were talking about but when they stopped selling raw tea rocks People who were used to drink three or four cans a day were totally unprepared to go cold turkey. In fact, some kids ended up having to go down to the nurse office because they had to shake with their drool. The school wouldn't bring Rody Rod back no matter how much people complained. But the other day, Leon Goodson sneaked in a backpack full of rody rocks he had brought from home and sold cans from three bucks a pop at recess a few kids who had brought rody rock from leon tucked behind the school and slurped down their drinks where no one could see them but one of the recess monitors mrs Leahy, got suspicious and went back there to see what was going on Mrs. Leahy told everyone they had to pour out their drinks immediately or she'd report them to the principal. But the second she was gone, the kids took off their shoes and soaked up the puddle with their socks. Tuesday, one of the reasons the school was been getting on us about our eating habits is because the presidential fitness test is coming up where they measure you all sort of stuff like how many setups and chin-ups you can do last year our school was in bottom 10 percent in the country and i guess the school is trying to do anything they can to turn around grown-ups say there's a big problem with kids in our generation being out of shape they don't exercise enough but i don't think taking away our bigger equipment is really helping matters in one part of the president's fitness test they checked to see how many push-ups you can do in a row the girls in our class did better than boys but that's only because the girls get to do an easier kind of push-up so the boys have to keep their whole body straight and go all the way down to the floor and then 
the back again. The girls get to let their knees touch the ground so they have a hard advantage. Not all the girls were happy that they got to do the easier push-up than boys though. In fact, a couple of girls signed a petition saying they demanded to do the same kind of push-ups as the boys. I'm pretty sure I know where they got that idea. In the soul study, we were learning about different ways people throughout his history was protested to change things they weren't happy about. I think the girls were expecting a big fight out of Mr. Underwood, but he just told them they could do regular push-ups if they felt like it. So, we're now all in the same boat. I thought that petition thing was a good idea though. I figured us boys should be allowed to do easier push-ups if we want. So, I wrote a petition and tried to get signatures. But I got a bad feeling when I saw the group of boys who signed up my petition and I decided to just drop the whole thing. A couple of weeks ago, we had to do sit-ups during physical education, but I got cramps and asked Mr. Underwood if I could just do the rest of my sit-ups as homework, but he said okay, but he wanted to prove to let them. So the next point, I got some of the mom's mascara and do a six pack of abs on my stomach. Then I made sure I had my shirt off when Mr. Underwood walked through the locker. The next thing I knew though, it I was a bunch of copycats and the following day half of the guys in my class showed up with their own fake six packs. But some of those guys were really awful makeup artists. Still, I think we had Mr. Underwood food at least until we got sweaty and the mascara ran.